You're listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author Sarah Box, where you get the inside scoop on the steps action takers and decision makers take to align their purpose to their principles and achieve their goals in business and life. We focus on the mantra, no labels, no limits, no excuses. Each week, you'll hear from remarkable guests who have overcome challenges and obstacles to succeed in the face of adversity. By listening to their stories, you'll get practical tips, tools, and resources you can implement today to bust through your own internalized prisons of worry and doubt. And now, without further ado, please welcome your commanding coach with plenty of chutzpah and heart, Sarah Box. Welcome to this episode of the No Labels No Limits podcast, a podcast all about helping action takers and decision makers like you align your purpose to your principles and achieve your goals in business and life. Hi, I'm Sarah from Sarah Box Coaching and Consulting. I'm a change agent, former executive director and best-selling author of The Changemaker Ripple Effect, a book about how one person's drive purpose and boldness can impact thousands. And I'm here to tell you that the life you want is possible with the right support, mindset, and strategy. And speaking more directly to that is our guest for today, Debbie Peterson. So before you get to meet Debbie, let me tell you a bit about her. Debbie is a business keynote speaker and a career growth strategist. Now that's some alliteration for me. As a corporate veteran of more than 25 years and a certified trainer of NLP, Debbie helps individuals develop an elevated mindset, accelerate professional results, and harness the power of their thoughts. She also just released a new book, Clarity, How Smart Professionals Create Career Success on Their Terms. Now, if that wasn't enough, on top of that, Debbie is an advocate for professional women and serves on the board of Athena International, a global organization committed to supporting, developing, and honoring women leaders. And I have a couple questions for Debbie about that also. But in this episode, you're going to hear why Debbie's mission has evolved to pay it forward, why she works with people who want to propel forward and focus on momentum so they can achieve the results they want, why clarity strongly affects our thinking, and how to gain clarity so you can make a change and shift your career. Debbie's going to reveal how you can more easily achieve your next level of success, how her mastery and mentoring programs lead to creating career and business success on your terms, and how to get a free career strategy session with Debbie. So now let's welcome our guest, Debbie Peterson. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate it. Well, first of all, after I learned more about you, I was really excited to be able to have a chance to have you on the show. Um, But before we dive into all of the things I just promised in the introduction, the audience and I want to know, what is one non-negotiable ritual or habit you do every day that keeps you focused on what you're out to achieve? Ooh, I love that. Inquiring minds want to know. So the the non-negotiable for me is how I start every day, which is by myself. And usually it's outside. So if at all possible, I'm outside. Um, it, it's important for me to uh, have a connection. So to connect with elements. So air, fire, water, earth do a uh, negative emotion release, which I do daily, sometimes depending on the day, I do it more than once and and doing a uh, forgiveness technique as well. Because in addition to being a certified trainer of NLP, um, I'm also a student of HUNA. So my, my HUNA practice is in large part how I start my mornings. And that's a non-negotiable that that keeps me centered um, and focused on what I need to. Thank you very much for that. That raises questions that I will put my rabbits on hold from letting them run wild so that we can stay a little bit focused. No promises. We stay there all interview. But um, I am interested if you would share with us what NLP is and how you use it in your work. Sure. 
So NLP is a behavioral technology. And, and when I explain it to my audiences, when I speak and, and, and the clients that I work with, N is neuro. So it's the mind. Linguistic is language. And uh, so, you know, your thoughts and your words that you use um, based around language and then programming. I don't know why they picked that term, but they did. Uh, it is your unconscious strategies and habits. You know, there are the things that you repeatedly do become a habit because your mind is efficient that way. And, and it doesn't, you know, it does it this way because it doesn't need to figure it out. It's already been figured out. Um, but it's also that way with our thoughts. So our thoughts become habits too. So NLP is literally the language of the mind that helps to produce your outcomes. So how do you use that in your work, Debbie? Like, where does that come into play? Maybe yeah. one, or, one or two instances, perhaps. Yeah, well, it, it's everything. So, you know, literally when I went through my NLP um, training, when I went through PRAC training, I, I really had no idea how much I was holding myself back. And uh, so, you know, discovering my limiting beliefs, and it, it was just such a game changer for me that... I ended up going through practitioner training, master practitioner's training, trainer's training. I did it um, online in an academy. I've gone back and I've, I've assisted. I mean, it, it just became so much of who I am. So one, it's how I live. But two, even though I don't teach people NLP um, when I coach with them or when I train, um, I don't speak on NLP, but it is the foundation of everything that I use. Because when I got to the other side of when I hit the wall in corporate, I thought, if I can do this, then other people can do it too. But I had to have a way to replicate it. And so looking in the rearview mirror and figuring out how I got from point A to point B created a system that is based on NLP. And so I use it. It's a foundation of everything I do. So now I have a question. What did hitting the corporate wall look like for you? <laughs> oh, and, and I think that uh, a lot of women experience this because I know when I, when I tell my story, people resonate with it. And that is that, you know, in, in one particular time, uh, it was oh, probably about 15 years ago, I was, I was struggling to be perfect in every single area of my life. You know, I mean, I just, I was, I was struggling, you know, I, I just, I wanted to be the perfect size, you know, if you're working out like a demon so you can fit in last year's clothes and, and just, you know, trying to be the perfect mom and have the perfect house. And, you know, it was just, the more I tried to be perfect, the more it was kind of out of my reach. Then, and that was at home and that it little things would happen, but at work, it was worse. At work, it was, I didn't feel like I was living up to my potential. I didn't, I felt kinesthetically like there was something more for me. And, but, but I didn't know what it was, you know, and I didn't know how to get it. And so that produced its own kind of stress. So essentially what ended up happening is that I started having heart palpitations. I started having like my left hand went numb. I couldn't get a full breath. I wasn't sleeping. I mean, I was the, the, the definition of a hot mess. And, um, you know, I knew that something had to give and I went to the doctor, you know, when, when you're, you find yourself in that place, it, it's, it's a little scary, but the control freak that I am, I knew what the doctor was going to say. It was heart disease, you know, cause I have heart disease on both sides of my family. And then my next thought was, I don't have time for this. Suck it up, buttercup. Right. You oh my God, those are my exact words. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that wasn't necessarily the best advice for me. No. You know, when I went in, he said to me, he goes, it's, it's stress. It's stress. I thought, you've got to be kidding me because that's one more thing that's my fault, right? I produced this. And so by the age of 40, I'm on high blood pressure medicine. I'm on migraine medicine for just these killer headaches. And now I'm on anti-anxiety medicine. So I am officially one mad, miserable, and now medicated woman. And I'm thinking, this is not how I want my life to go. And, you know, that it was just, it was a dark time. I mean, it was like I was living in a jar with a lid. I could see outside of the jar, but I couldn't access it. Like I had disconnected from anything that meant anything to me. 
I just was kind of running on empty. And, and that was what it looked like when I hit the wall. And it was really interesting because it was my boss who sent me to the NLP training. I will be forever grateful for that because I mean, when I went, I kind of went in with my arms crossed, you know, that attitude about, okay, well, what is this about? And, and then, you know, I started hearing about how your, sh- your thoughts, you know, shape your beliefs, shape your actions, that if you make different decisions, you can have different outcomes, that you can make different choices and have different results. And it was like, holy cow. There is hope for me. You know, I have more control than I thought I did. And that was such a relief. And then, you know, the arms kind of came down and I just, I leaned in. So that does answer a question I was going to say, why do we need help in thinking differently about ourselves? But, well, it talks about the power of thinking differently, period. But what about why do we need help? Why is it hard for us to see sometimes how we're thinking and how that's affecting us? Well, we kind of live in our own little bubble. And, and you know, again, the mind is efficient and uh, it forms habits out of things that we already know and including our thoughts. So here's the deal. About 95% of your thinking is unconscious during the day. So as you and I are sitting here talking to each other, you know, your heart is beating right? You're, you're breathing, your eyes are blinking. I can see it, but you're not doing so consciously. Your, your mind is running your body and, and your mind is such a powerful tool for this. So 95% of your thoughts are unconscious. That means the majority of your thinking, you don't know what it is. It also means that you are taking, you're making decisions based on thoughts you don't know you're having. And then you're taking action based on decisions, based on thoughts you don't know you're having. So most of the time, you're not even aware of what you're doing to hold yourself back. And it is by having someone to ask those good questions, and they don't have to be difficult questions, but it helps you to uncover what's inside of you, you know, because you have all the resources to do anything that you want. You just have to figure out how. But, you know, a lot of times when we're going for big change, it's that head trash that gets in the way. It's that, you know, negative Nellie or negative Nate. And forgive me if anybody's named Nellie or Nate, because I don't say Debbie Downer for obvious reasons. But, uh, you know, it gets in the way. And um, it's hard to get out of your own way. It's hard to get yourself out of that unless you've, you've really had somebody to help you start that process. Yeah, I have found for me it's helpful to have a mirror. Right. And not a mirror that I'm holding, but a mirror that someone will lovingly hold up and go, are you seeing this? What do you make of this? What do you think of this? You know, or did you notice that you've done X, Y and Z? What's that about? You know, and having a chance to go, really? Because you're right. You can't always tell. But let me ask you this. So assuming someone's listening and they they really can relate. I mean, your imagery of being inside a glass jar and not knowing how to get out, but being enclosed in that, but seeing what's out there, right? Um, Say someone's experiencing that feeling, maybe they don't have the words to articulate it. What's one of the um, ways that they could start to look? Let's assume they don't have a boss that was as prescient to say, I think you need to go to this, you know? (laughs) What's a way for them to start you know, I would say the place to start is um, with with the negative emotions that you're holding, because a lot of times it, it's inside of you, but it's what covers up that brilliance that's inside of you, what covers up that potential that's inside of you. And so it's those negative emotions, it's anger, it's sadness, it's fear, it's guilt, it's those limiting beliefs and decisions that we have or make about ourselves It is the self-doubt. It is the anxiety and the stress. It's like those are taking up all our bandwidth, right? So that is all we really have the ability to focus on. So we stay in the jar. You know, we stay mad, miserable, and medicated. We, We stay anxious. We stay on medication. So until you have a way to start almost like layers of an onion to start peeling that away, can you access what's underneath? So I would say the first step is to, to deal with 
that baggage that you're carrying around. Because I'll tell you, the longer you carry it, the heavier it gets. So you talk about the importance of an elevated mindset. And just now you're talking about learning about your thinking and the baggage, right? Mm -hmm. So give me a simple, if there is one, a simple exercise I could do that might get me started down that path. Say I'm not able or ready right yet to talk to someone. Is there something I could do to say, well, try this. It's just practice doing this one thing that may lead me to further be able to move. Um, so one thing to um, start on the path of an elevated mindset or one thing to do to release negative emotions and things like that. Are they linked? It depends on where you are, is, is, is the short answer. Okay, the long answer to your question is, can I have one of each? You, you bet. Okay, <laughs> so for someone to start the process of having an elevated mindset, it is really having an idea of where it is that you want to go. What is it that you want to achieve? What is meaningful to you? Um, so a lot of people, so I speak to people on career. So when I go and I travel um, and I keynote at, at conferences and, and things like that, I am talking to primarily women in, um, and emerging leaders in career. And so to start them off on that path to have that elevated mindset, it's really getting curious about what you want because a lot of people don't know. They know they're not happy. They know this is where they don't want to be, but they haven't really given any thought to what they do want. And what I find is people, met, they'll spend more time planning a vacation than they will their career or what is next for them in any area of their life. So I would say if, if you want to accelerate your mindset, if you want to elevate your mindset, then pick the area that you want that to happen in because to try to focus on everything at once is focusing on nothing, right? Um, jack of all trades, master of none, but find out what area or figure out what area you want to focus it in and then get curious, create a list, brainstorm, totally stream of consciousness, no judgment. And let's say it's career. And you say, uh, what might be next for me in career? Maybe it is a promotion. Maybe it is going back for um, a higher ed degree. Maybe it's a certification. Maybe there's a, a salary amount that you want to achieve. Maybe it's a number of clients you want to attract. Uh, maybe it's a person you want to meet. Whatever it is, just really get curious and empty out all the things that you can think of. The more, the better of what might be next. And that right there, that's a pivot. Wondering how to adapt to the rapid fire changes we are all experiencing? Curious about where you should start to position your nonprofit for future success? Want to know how I can help you and your team prioritize and address hard questions? Then book your free discovery call with me at sarahbox.com forward slash contact. I'll help you get clear so you can lead others. Now back to the show. So what you've done is that you have turned yourself from the past, and you have reoriented your thinking and your outlook towards the future. So just doing the exercise has huge implications. But, you know, once you've started thinking of things, you know, you've started kind of a new pattern, and your mind will keep thinking of things, and it will find ways. You will find these opportunities that all of a sudden come up, or somebody you've wanted to meet, and all of a sudden you have a chance to meet them or go to lunch with them. And it's not, there, there are no it's serendipitous. Uh, it's not a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. But just doing that exercise where you you think about what might be next, and then, so you don't stress yourself out, divide it into three buckets. So the, the first bucket would be something that really lights you up. You're interested in it. It's going to move you towards where you want to go. We'll call that the A bucket. The B bucket are the things that are important, but not as important as the A. And the C bucket are the items that, yeah, they're on the list, but they're not really important right now. I'm gonna stick a pin in it just so you don't forget it. But here's the deal. If you are a type A driven, let's power through it kind of person, you're gonna wanna take everything and put it in the A bucket because it's all important and you wanna get it all done now. But that is how we stress ourselves out. So in this particular exercise, you have to divide your list equally between all three buckets. 
then you can prioritize within the bucket. And that will give you a starting point. That will give you focus and it'll give you a way forward to start. So if, if it's um, generally, that's where I would start. Um, if it is uh, negative emotions that you're talking about, I would, again, pick an area and start journaling around what is weighing on your mind, what is making you anxious, and finding release processes to help you identify and then let go. And there are so many. I think they're individual to a person. Um, I have techniques that I use with NLP and techniques I use with Puna. But if you're looking to let go of negative emotions, first you have to identify what it is you're carrying around. So it involves the same sort of curiosity and willing to get messy. Well, and I'm I'm not hearing anywhere in that that you have to be hard or harsh about what either what is on your possibilities list, like too judgmental about it. And the same about like the stuff you're feeling and it's heavy for you instead of saying, well, that's terrible. I should not feel like that. It's just like, it's just there. It is no judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that does tend to slow us back when we then get into that secondary loop of only crummy people think like that or do, you know, I mean, it's just, it's a crazy little circle. And well, and we think that everybody has worse problems than us. So therefore, we don't feel that w- we have any right to have our own or to think that they're important. Um, and that's just not the case. I mean, yes, there are people who have more problems. There are people that have less. There are people that have different problems. But they're, whatever you're thinking, they're your feelings. They're your reactions. And you need to honor that. Well, again, going back to how can you know what's what, I think just giving that thing, having someone, for instance, like yourself say, catch me if I'm saying, well, that, I don't need to worry about that because so-and-so is dealing with so much more right now. I, you know, It's nice to have someone say, we're not talking about them. <laughs> we're talking about you, you know, right. because you're important. Right. Um, and that can be a tough one to get used to sometimes. Well, and, you know, if you are someone who takes care of others, if you're someone who's in a leadership position, a management position, you know, even if you're a leader in your community in your own life, it doesn't matter. How can you be of service if you're not taking care of yourself? There's just nothing left to serve, you know? Nothing left. And people need you to be well. I also think about, and this is a conversation I have frequently with folks, that you're trying to do well for others. But what they're seeing is what you're doing to yourself as well. So there's a disconnect, right? Like, well, Sarah says this, but man, she's not doing that. I'm not sure, you know. And it's 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 not integral, right? It's kind of not just happening. So so that's really important when people. So this I want to come back to like that. Uh, I was gonna first. I was gonna really laugh when you're saying, "Okay, you're not putting all in the buckets, right?" This you can't load everything in eggs. I'm going, "Okay, that would go there and there and there." You said it has to be equal. I'm going, "Oh, dang it!" So I think that's actually the hardest part, right? Is having the fun writing it out and then going, "Okay, segment it." Segment deciding, it. deciding. It's and sometimes when you do that, by the time you get back to looking at what was in bucket B or C, you're going. They don't matter anymore, you know, because I took care of A and A changed who I was or changed how I thought about who I was or whatever. Will you talk a little bit about some of the experiences your clients and folks you work with have had as they kind of move through their own process in this? Yeah, well, it's funny. um, So just the exercise that I went through. Um, All of my clients go through that. I use it as um, kind of a, a career focus. Uh, exercise, but I also use it for for time management to help people focus in on, you know, just because they're focused on everything. And so one particular client I had, um, she came to me. And and the thing is with NLP, you know, you when you listen to the language, it, it will give you an indication, a snapshot of what's going on in the head. And, you know, when you're trained to to look for that or to listen to that, you can pick up on things that they're not even aware of. So, you know, they're telling things to you that um, they're not aware that they're doing. But then when you give them their words back, it's kind of like, oh. So one particular client I had, um, 
she was just focused on everything. She was a, a, a small business owner. She had her own business and uh, she just was tired and, and frustrated and stressed out and just kind of at her wit's end. And, uh, you know, I kid you not, just with that exercise and going through and figuring out the priorities, it, inside of a week, she was, she was excited about work again. And, and it was the thing that happened for her was that she found out what was truly important and what she was passionate about again. And, you know, when, you've, when you're connected to what it is that you really want and it ties in with your values and why you really want it, then you don't need anything outside of you to motivate you. You're motivated from within. And that's just such a great place to operate from. So it, it has, you know, it's a do with. I'm not doing anything to them, but it, it's a do with. And that's what she discovered. Another client that I had, and, and this was funny, um, listening to her language uh, about her business. I mean, it was almost um, the, the business was an entity, like it was another person and she didn't like them. I mean, it was just, you know, it would be language you used with like your arch enemy, you know? And, and when we went through the, the initial session and I'm just, so I'm curious and I pointed that out to her and she's like, oh, and, you know, so we did some work around that and it was like the whole outlook changed. It, she was just, she was a different person because she was carrying all that animosity for this entity. And so that's where all her energy was going. That's where all her focus was going. And again, she had no bandwidth to do anything else. So when we addressed that and gave her tools and strategies to, to do something with it, then it just, it, it freed up possibility again. How so fun. it's, it's fun to do. Well, and also she gets to have a relationship with something she created, a positive relationship, yes. right? And like, because yes. that's, that's terrible. A lot of people go into business for themselves because they want that positive interaction. You certainly don't want to wake up everyone, you know? And so you know, that, there's a lot of common, there's a lot of common elements. So, you know, I've done a lot of work in banking and real estate in the meetings industry, but you know, we... We think we're th there were there we are the only ones who think this way. You know, we think this is only happening to us. But not only is it happening to others, but it you know it's happening across industries. And you know, when you when you kind of take yourself out of the center of it and and look at it, you're able to do something with it. So so thank you for teeing up my next question for me so well. Oh, when you talk you. about going through industries, I want to go back to your work with Athena International. I'm very curious what you are seeing internationally with women and leadership in general, if there are trends or just what, what's happening worldwide with that from your perspective. Well, I would... Um love to answer about our international audiences. However, the work that I do with Athena is mostly domestically with our communities in the States. Um, but I, I will tell you that, um, you know, the balance is shifting worldwide uh, along a spectrum. So some areas are balancing a little more quickly. Other areas are a little farther behind. But, uh, you know, there's just a spectacular focus on bringing women, feminine energy, feminine leadership, and regardless of gender, regardless of how somebody self-identifies, feminine leadership does not necessarily mean it's a woman who is leading. It's a skill. It's an attribute. It's a characteristic. So, you know, I just really think that we're in an exciting time. And I know with my work uh, through Athena that, that, that things are, that things are shifting, like I said, in some areas faster than others, but it's a great time. Describe a little bit about, for folks who haven't really thought about business from the perspective of feminine energy, um, what that shift would look like. So for instance, I walk into a business and there's a before and after. I know it doesn't happen like black and white, but what might I notice from a business that has shifted more or is further along on the spectrum than another? What, what differences might I see? Well, it, 
it, it ties to culture. And uh, with a more feminine outlook or a, yeah, with a more feminine outlook, there are certain things that uh, may tend to happen uh, more relational instead of transactional. Um, encouraging people to to learn and learn constantly, to celebrate, um, to advocate for one another, more community, more of a community focus than a silo focus. So in that environment, would you see more partnerships and collaborations? Definitely more collaboration. Oh, I love it. You know. <laughs> That's exciting. I like that. Collaborate, don't compete. I mean, you know, the pie is big enough. And I'm not sure we only have the opportunity to make it bigger. I think the pie is bigger than any of us can imagine. I think so too. Hey, so let's talk a little bit more about your book. I know that it's fairly new out. Will you talk about it? um, What led you to write it and what readers could expect to get from it? Okay. So it's funny because um, the title is Clarity. Clarity is kind of my word and my superpower if somebody asks me and how smart professionals create career success on their terms. And when I wrote the book, I got pushed back. Well, that's redundant, someone said. Career success on their terms, that's redundant. And I said, no, not necessarily, because just because you're successful, just because you have a good paycheck or what you think is a good job does not necessarily mean that you're happy or fulfilled. So it it really is figuring out what success, how you define success and what it means to you. And so that's what the book is about. I think cover to cover, it would take you a little over a couple of hours to read it. Um, But that's not what the book is about either. It's a do with process. And, you know, it is get a journal, get a tablet, whatever, and go through the exercises. So it's a way, you know, I talked about what you need, what you need to do, what you want to do is already inside of you. But there's things covering it up. And it's hard for you to discover what that is without the good questions. So the book contains the good questions just to help you learn more about yourself and what success on your terms means. I think that in itself is so powerful because I know for myself, having kind of gone through different cycles in life, right, where you have to come back and go, is now, should I be doing now what I was doing? Is it leading me where I should be going or think I want to go? But that whole question of how do you define success versus are you accepting success defined by others, which leaves you feeling back to your metaphor inside of a jar cooped up? Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is that if you don't know what you want, if you haven't defined success, then it's easy to go off on a squirrel. You know, I see somebody, oh, and they're being successful doing that. I need to try that. Oh, I I see they're knocking it out of the park over there. I need to learn how to do that. And then pretty soon you are spread so thin Um, And you've never given yourself an opportunity to cross the finish line because you haven't said what the finish line is. So it's almost like a form of perfectionism when you're chasing that much success in those that many different directions. Thanks for writing the book. My pleasure. (laughs) Well, and I'll have you know, I wrote it kicking and screaming. I was going to say I was going to challenge you on my pleasure. Having written a book, I'm thinking mostly. Well, it is work. It is work and rework again. And it can be scary a little bit, especially, oh, yeah. you know, we, it does kick up beliefs like, well, who am I? All that stuff, right? Yeah. And it did. It's kind of like, okay, here you go. Oh my goodness. Can I go somewhere now? <laughs> I know. Finally, I, someone says, Sarah, publish it. Don't, yes, you're going to find a mistake the minute after it's published. You're going to want to fix it publish it right man she was brutal and I thought I gotta get her off my back (laughs) right I've got to follow through but without that coach and without that encouragement it would have been easy to go someday I'll I'll finish the last step right someday and one day never come they never do so I'll tell you what it was my coach who did the same thing get it done there were no other there's no other focus for the next 90 days it's that book And there's one other really important point I want to make about what you shared and what I shared is that that was a big deal. That was a huge step. And the more you are willing to step outside of your comfort zone, the more you are willing to stretch yourself, 
the more you become who you're meant to be. Well, and I realized once I had done that, the purpose of the book beyond what I'd hoped it would do actually was the stretch. I'm thinking, okay, that's not so bad. I, I can live through that. And then I thought, well, what else would stretch me? Hey, I've always wanted to interview people. Let's do a podcast. I'm thinking, okay, Sarah, here we go, <laughs> Miss Introvert. And actually speaking, I, you know, I'm an introvert as well. At this point, I think I'm an ambivert. But speaking happened by accident. I mean, there's no way. If you would have asked me seven, eight years ago oh, or told me that, you know, you'll be up on stage in front of hundreds of people, I would have been, you're smoking something because that's certainly not me. <laughs> what are you on, brother? Right? So um, that's such a great reflection, though. <laughs> Thanks for that little quick trip down memory lane. So, Debbie, as we wrap this up, will you share more about the very generous offer you've made for a free coaching session and let listeners know how they, two things, how they can take advantage of it and what they can expect during that time with you? Because sometimes you it's scary to reach out to folks. It is. Um, and and here's here's what can happen, is that you think that you need to have it all figured out. Um, that, that people depend on you, that you hold a certain role, that you just always got to have it together. And when you're in that place where you don't have it figured out, that's exactly when you need to ask. That's exactly when you need to, to reach out. And you'll be glad that you did because it signifies a pivot right off the bat. Just by taking that action, you're now going in a different direction, which is terrific. So the career clarity sessions that, that I do with people, here's what you can expect. Uh, I, I, I want to get to know you a little bit. So I'd really like to understand uh, a little more about you. I would like to understand uh, where you're at right now. And I'd love, also like to have a, a better understanding of where it is that you want to go. Because in talking about that, then again, I can listen uh, and I can also see. So I like to do these strategies via, the, um, via Zoom but I can listen for what may be getting in your way. And then I can make a recommendation about what you can do instead. So from what I hear, feed it back. Does this sound like we're on point? And, and usually it is. And um, so here's something you know that you can do to move to the next level. And if they'd like some help in doing that, I'm happy to discuss that as well. But it really is about whomever I'm speaking with and, and help, helping to understand where they're at and where they want to go. And if I can give them anything at all, I, I want to provide value. So whatever I can do on that call to help them move to the next level is just great. Well, and it sounds like that fits right in with your pay it forward, right? It does. I, I'll tell you, I have been truly, truly blessed because that was a pivot in my life, a huge pivot in my life. And um, I just, I don't know where I'd be. So I, I will always be grateful. And I'm happy Thank, to be oh my gosh. I have so enjoyed our conversation today, Debbie. And I want to thank too. you so much for being on the podcast. Um, I do not believe in coincidences. So we were meant to have this conversation today about this topic. And with that, No Labels, No Limits podcast listeners, I hope that you will, even if you're uncomfortable, take a risk, reach out to Debbie, and just have a conversation. You don't know where it might lead and you may be more thrilled with what comes in your life in the next months than you have ever been before. So bet on yourself, take a risk and reach. And if anybody would like to reach out, they can go to claritywithdebbie.com and that'll take them right to the place where they can make a, an appointment and we'll, we'll do just that, get them some clarity. So claritywithdebbie.com. And if you're driving and can't write that down, it'll be in the show notes. So don't panic and stay <laughs> safe. All right, Debbie, thank you so much. And I look forward to further conversations. I do too, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author, change agent, and strategic vision coach, Sarah Box. You can grab the show notes and find out how to work with Sarah at sarahbox.com forward slash no labels, no limits podcast.
We'd love this podcast to reach as many people as possible. So please remember to rate, leave a five-star review and share the podcast with someone you think would get value from this conversation. Until next time, keep taking those daily action steps to align your purpose to your principles and achieve your goals in business and life.